Good evening, mga kapatid. Midweek na naman po, Wednesday, the month of June. At uh, ngayon po ay ating pong Bible study. I hope na makakasama ko po kayo sa ating pong pag-aaral ng salita ng Panginoon. Of course, uh, isa pong uh, pagbabalita na gusto ko pong pahatid sa ating pong mga kapatiran that now we are doing our physical, our live physical worship. Last Sunday po, the very first Sunday of June, we started our physical worship. Now, we are praying to do that every Sunday. So, every Sunday po mga kapatid, tayo po ngayon ay magkakaroon po ng lingguhang Uh, pagtitipon sa ating pong church sa Siritos and uh, we fix our um, auditorium, our room that uh, we are using now for our worship so that we can uh, have our worship time earlier in the morning at uh, so meron pa lang pong ilang mga bagay na gusto po natin ayusin Part of this is, for example, in cable management, uh, we want to replace a couple of uh, uh, lights. So, kailangan po natin yung ating mga men uh, that we could schedule our uh, one Saturday work day para po mapalitan natin yung uh, ilaw and then gawa po natin yung cable management para sa ating uh, audio video. And a couple of things, yun po mga ladies natin, I know that uh, they will uh, meet and uh, try to make our place conducive for worship. Alam po ninyo, ang sarap nung naayos po natin yung pong lugar na gagamitin po natin every Sunday sa paglilingkod natin sa Panginoon. No. Bakit nga ba naman hindi? Eh kung yung bahay nga natin, di po ba? Ay atin pong inaayos. No organized and ho. Uh, pag may mga renovation, we are spending money to renovate those things para naman maging presentable. Not only for those who will be visiting us or some of our friends who will be going to our house, but for most, para naman pag uwi natin sa bahay natin, we feel relaxed. Hindi po ba makita mo yung bahay mo na maayos at hindi yung magulo o gibagiba. Alam mo ninyo, ganun din sa tahanan ng Panginoon. We want to uh, prepare the place conducive for all of us to come and worship God. At uh, so, kagawa po tayo ng uh, schedule para magkagawa po tayo ng isang Saturday work day again. Uh, the last time, I am thankful for some of our ladies uh, who came and helped me to work dun po sa church. Um, so, meron pa lang po tayong ilang mga bagay na dapat po natin tapusin. Ano. And uh, so exciting and so thankful uh, that at last we can have our Sunday services sa church. So, maraming maraming salamat po at uh, sa kabutihan ng Panginoon. Napakabuti ng Panginoon sa akin. Ano. At uh, We are thankful to God, hindi lamang po yan, sa patuloy na pagbibigay sa atin ang kalusugan ng Panginoon. Mamaya po meron tayong prayer time still, meron po tayong mga kapatiran that we want to bring to God and pray for them. Ano? At uh, sa oras po nito, huwag po ninyong kalimutan, uh, this coming Sunday po, this second Sunday of June, our physical worship, 9 AM, alas 9 po ng umaga, magkita-kita po tayo. At uh, nakakatuwa po, ano, naisipin. Uh, as uh, we come to this point that now, pretty much, America is opening up. We pray that God's hand will continuously protect us. At uh, alisin niya itong mga karamdaman. Ano. At yung mga pong ilan sa ating dumaraan pa ng karamdaman na yan ay patuloy na hipuin ng Panginoon. 
So sa ilang sandali po mga kapatid, we will come to God and we will pray and we will bring our petitions before God. And then right after our prayer time, we will study God's Word. So tonight, let's come to God and let us pray. Tonight, to Heavenly Father, we're coming before Thee. Thank You, Lord, for the opportunity that we can pray, we can come before Thee, bring our petitions. Maraming salamat, Panginoon, sa iyong patuloy na pag-iingat, pagpapala sa amin. Tonight, your Heavenly Father, as we come, I would like to bring before Thee our friends and members who are uh, having some challenges in their physical body. Pray for your continued health and healing upon Sister Pressy Ruedas. Patuloy mo siyang hawakan, Panginoon, at patuloy mo siyang hipuin sa kanyang mga pinagdadaan ng karamdaman. We know the Heavenly Father that you are our great healer some medication that she is taking. I also pray for Brother Jeff Bognot. Be with him, O oh God. Continue to uh, show your power upon his life. We are thankful, Lord, for his life. Uh, he's using his life to serve you, Panginoon. Continue to bless him, O oh God. Pray for Lito Dizan, the friend of Sister Lai, for your continued healing upon him, sa kanyang karamdaman. So continue to be with him. Kanunit Panginoon, tonight we are praying, Lord, for some of our prayer list. Pray for Ernesto David, Cheryl Sebastian. Kelly Munoz, Virgilio Ruedas, Malu Contawe, Miggy Victoria. We pray for uh, Rika Gaffney, Nancy Arceo, Larry Cahuco, Peter Manares, Apple David, Aurora Fernandez, Ana Flores, Tatay Felix, and Ali Melin Gaya. Laville Ligaya, Cornelia Concepcion, Joy Castro, Anne Cloud. Lord, we keep on praying, asking for your continued healing upon their body and those who need continuous health provided for them. Thank you, Lord, because we recognize you and we are trusting in you can perform miracles in their life. We pray for salvation of Aaron Frihiliana, Rico Kahukum, Jean Obadias, Rika and David Gaffney, Elmer and Loretta Villanueva. Na mga Panginoon, ang mga kanalong ito makakilala sa iyo. Our mission that we're doing in the Philippines, we pray that you will continue to Use them, O oh God, to spread your kingdom. And you will use them, O oh God, to uh, preach the gospel to those who don't know you as the Lord and Savior. Lord, we pray for your continued spiritual growth for Nestor, Ruedas, Michelle, and Andy Martinez. Lord, pinupuri ka namin. Pinapasalamatan ka na namin. We continue to pray for this country that you will give wisdom to our president and those who are serving under him that you will give them the wisdom. The government, we pray for the Philippines. Be with them, O oh God. At um, even the nation of Israel for your continued protection. Raming salamat, Panginoon, for everything. 
tonight, O oh God, we are bringing to you all these petitions. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity that we were able to pray. Thank you, Lord, for your love, for dying for us. Lord, we're giving back to you praise and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. For our study tonight, from the book of Genesis, Pabasahin ko lamang po dito yung apat pong talata from chapter 37, the book of Genesis, from verses 1 to verse number 4. This is part of the story of Joseph. At kukunin po natin yung po, atin pong pag-aaral uh, from this uh, particular verses that we will be reading. And sabi po sa verse number 1, Genesis chapter 37, Now Jacob dwelt in the land where his father was a stranger, in the land of Canaan. This is the history of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brothers and the lad was with the sons of Bilhah and the sons of Zilpah his father's wives and Joseph brought a bad report of them to his father now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children so now we're getting familiar with this particular chapter in the book of Genesis because he was the son of his old age also he made him a tunic a robe of many colors but when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him Lord, continue to bless our study. Tonight, O oh God, continue to lift and strengthen our resolve as we put our faith upon your hand. Bless our time and Lord, we humble ourselves before thee and we exalt thee in our lives in Jesus name Amen So sa ating pong uh, pag-aaral sa oras na ito makikita po natin yung pong naging buhay the life of Joseph in fact from uh, the verses that we have read we have found out that he was 17 years old. And at that very early age of his life, Joseph's life, he began one of the most remarkable life in the Bible. In fact, we will see the pros and cons that this particular account gave us the life of Joseph we will find that he was loved and yet also one of the most hated brother he was also favored but also abused he was tempted but also trusted he was exalted but also abased. Yet, one thing that we will find in Joseph's life, at no point in, I should say, a hundred and ten years of his life, we will see that Joseph seems to focus his eyes to God. 
You know, he never ceased. He never stopped trusting God and living his life for God. You know, adversity, problems, trials, heartaches, betrayal, never kept Joseph where his faith becomes more deeper trust in God in his life. It did not harden his character. Prosperity did not ruin his life nor his character. In fact, in Joseph's life, as the Bible has given us, he became the same in his private life as well as in public. And one thing that we will find, he was truly a great man of God. In fact, if we will compare his life to some great men from the Bible, we will see that Enoch shows the walk of faith. Noah shows the perseverance of faith. Abraham shows the obedience of faith. Isaac shows the power of faith. Jacob shows the discipline of faith. But you know, to Joseph, one thing that we will be able to see in his life, Joseph shows the triumph of faith. Yun pong gusto ko pong tingnan po natin sa maikling oras ng ating pong pag-aaral. The triumph of faith. You see, in the life of Joseph, he never complained. And he never compromised. Joseph was also is a type or picture of Jesus. Yan po ang gusto ko pong tingnan po natin sa ating pong pag-aaral. Kasi mahalaga po sa atin ang pananampalataya. What we call faith. And the reason why we are enjoying the blessing of salvation is because of faith. Yung pong basihan ng ating pong kaligtasan is not based on our religion. You know, we never become a Christian because we belong to a particular denomination. Hindi po yan. Ang daan ng kaligtasan Because we will find that our salvation is because of our faith on the Lord Jesus Christ. Kasi po, inilagay po natin yung buhay po natin sa ating pong pananampalataya sa ating Panginoong Heso Kristo. And once we put our faith on the Lord Jesus Christ, that what saves us. In fact, the book of Ephesians said, it is not our work. It is our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Ibigan, nakilala mo na ba ang Panginoon sa iyong buhay? Have you ever put your trust and your faith on the Lord Jesus Christ? At yan po ang mahalaga po sa atin, especially sa palahon po natin ngayon. One thing that the Bible had taught us is that one day the Lord Jesus Christ will come back and receive unto Him those who belongs to Christ. 
And those are who accepted Him as their Lord and personal Savior. Pagdating po sa langit, you know, God will never ask us, what is your religion? But He will ask us, have you ever received the Lord Jesus Christ in your life? At alam po ninyo, yan po ang mahalaga sa buhay po natin bilang isang tao. Because in this world, we don't have hope. Ito po mga nakikita po natin all over the world is hopelessness. Wala po tayong makikita ang pag-asa sa daigdig na ito. And how many times every politician will try to find ways to give us hope but to no avail. Makikita po natin ang mundo po natin pasama ng kasama ng pasama. And that is only a sign nagpapakita po sa atin that the Lord Jesus Christ is coming very, very soon. And I hope, kaibigan, tonight you already accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. If not, then one day once He comes, like a thief in the night, in other words, Jesus Christ will be coming unannounced. Hindi po sa atin sasabihin kung kailan siya darating. But He will just be coming. Sabi po ng Bible, parang isang magnanakaw, di ba? Ang magnanakaw, hindi sa atin sinasabi kung kailan siya darating eh. Hindi niya kakalabitin tayo, Hey Jesse, dadaan ako mamaya sa bahay mo, kukunin ko yung ilang mga gamit mo. No. You know, the thief will come unannounced. The same way that the Lord Jesus Christ, His second coming, He will come unannounced. And I hope tonight, handa ka na kaibigan. At the end of this program, I will invite you to accept the Lord Jesus Christ. Kaya po mahalaga po sa atin ang pananampalataya our faith on the Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, in our study tonight, gusto ko po tingnan po natin the triumph of faith in Joshua chapter 6. Yung pong pananampalataya na meron itong si Joshua. Just like, Je- just like Joseph. How Joseph trusted God in his life. We will see that he was blessed by God when he learned to put his life in God's hand. And the same, th- the same time with Joshua, when he encountered one of the biggest problems, and that is to conquer the place of Jericho. And we know that Jericho was a formidable city. In fact, the Bible said it was even a great city. It is great in antiquity, in fact, one of the oldest cities. It is great in iniquity as well. It is great in hostility. Jericho is sometimes standing between us and God. Gusto ko pong makita po natin sa gabi nito there are times in our life as we walk, as we live our life as children of God. There are times there is this wall of Jericho blocking us and sometimes God will do that in our life because God wants to strengthen God wants to develop our faith in Him one thing that we will find that God's people 
sa buhay natin bilang mananampalataya, merong plano ang Diyos. God has a plan. God has a purpose. And He wants to display His power and His praise by the things that are happening. Circumstances that are happening in our life. And sometimes it could be a wall of Jericho. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 30, we will find the Bible said, By faith the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. You see, victory is not achieved by fighting. Victory was received by faith. Yan po ang isang makikita po natin. Dito po sa laban na ating pong dinadaanan sa buhay po natin. Alam po ninyo mga kapatid, mga kaibigan, di po tayo magwawagi ng hindi natin kasama ang Diyos sa ating pakikibaka. Because the only way we will be able to achieve victory in our lives is not by fighting, but rather victory is received by faith. At kanina natin kinakailangan ilagay yung ating pagtitiwala. Alam po ninyo, hindi natin kayang ilagay yung pagtitiwala natin bilang anak ng Diyos sa mga bagay na ating nakikita, sa mga bagay na ating nahahawakan. One thing that we will find as we put our faith on things that are tangible, things that could be rubbed and, be, and can be taken from us, we will fail. Mabibigo po tayo sa buhay po natin. But, if we learn to put our faith upon God, upon God then we will receive victory. Faith links our nothingness to God's almightiness. Ulitin ko po. Faith, kung ating pananampalataya, link with our nothingness. To God's almightiness. Tigman po natin sa oras na ito. The captain of our faith. Sino yung captain? Sino yung namunguna? Kanino natin dapat ilaan yung ating pananampalataya? At bakit natin kinakailangang ilaan yung ating pananampalataya? sa kamay ng Diyos. In verse number 13, the Bible said, And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho, that he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, there stood a man over against him, and his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went unto him and said unto him, Art thou for us? or for our adversaries. Yun po ang sabi ng verse number 13. In chapter 5 of verse number 13, we will find that it was God. In fact, in verse number 14, it says, And he said, Nay, but as captain of the host of the Lord, am I now come? And... Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship and said unto him, What saith my Lord unto his servants? And the captain, I want you to see the word 
is the word captain. And the captain of the Lord's host said unto Joshua, Loose thy shoes from off thy foot, for the place whereon thou standest is holy. You know, he was facing before God, who was the captain. And tonight we will see it is important for us to give our faith to God as we trust Him in our life. There are things in our life that are done and not in and all. For Joshua, he will encounter part of his life to be confronted by a um, a walk, a very strong fortress, a, a wall that will try to block our faith in trusting God. In fact, my Kitapunatin that the Bible described this particular wall being built as strong as it as it as it was. And the purpose is to protect those people living inside Jericho. But these people are wicked and God wants to destroy the city of Jericho. And we will see that God is presenting this to Joshua. Sa buhay natin mga manan ng palataya, Minsan po, papapadaanin tayo ng Panginoon sa ganitong uri ng suliranin. As if, as we go through life, we will hit a very strong fortress. The wall of Jericho. Namisan kung titignan po natin sometimes when we look at how big the problem is, it's impossible for us to go through. Gano kaya karami sa atin sa oras na ito na dumadaan ng suliranin na hindi natin alam ang tugon sa ating pinagdadaanan. Ito man ay karamdaman, ito man ay pampinansyal, ito man ay relation, relational, Anong yung pinagdadaanan? Alam po ninyo, dapat po natin makita. At ang mahalaga po dito sa ating pong pagdaan sa buhay pananampalataya. E sino yung kapitan? Who is the captain of our faith? For Joshua, he learned easily in the book of Joshua chapter 5, that it was God. The kailangan niyang ibigay yung buhay po niya. That he needed to lift his eyes before him. So that he can trust him. Na kaya po niyang pagtiwalaan sa kanyang buhay bilang isang mana ng palatayan. At the same time, ganun din po sa buhay natin, mga kapatid pagdaan po natin sa sunirin ng buhay. Alam po ninyo, hindi lamang po sa pagdaan po natin for us to be able to receive victory. To be able to triumph to win the battle that we are facing in our life as Christians. 
Not only we need to recognize that God is our captain, but also the compliance of our faith. Pagsunod. Alam po ninyo, it is obedience. Yung pong pagsunod po natin sa Diyos. If we will move on to Joshua chapter 6 and verse number 3, the Bible said, And ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go around about the city once. And thou shalt do this in six days. Alam po ninyo ang Diyos. He is always giving us specific details of how we will follow Him. Gusto ng Panginoon is for us to exercise our obedience. Gusto ng Diyos na matutunan po natin na sumunod sa Kanya. So, why did God tell Joshua to do this? Una po sa lahat, to prove their obedience. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 18, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Alam po ninyo, ang gusto po ng Diyos sa atin, ano ho, is so that sa buhay natin, gusto ng Panginoon na makita sa atin na tayo ay mano ng palataya na marunong sumunod sa Diyos. For Joshua and his men who will go to conquer the place of Jericho. God gave them specifics. In fact, the Bible said, I want you to compass, or in other words, I want you to walk. Hindi po sinabi ng Bible na to run. But rather, it uses the word to compass or to walk. Padala sa buhay natin, pag very busy tayo, ibang masyadong nagmamadali tayo, ano ang kinikreate sa atin? It creates impatience. Diba? Madala sa buhay natin, mga mana ng balataya, gusto natin, mabilis yung tugon ng Panginoon. Pag dumarating tayo sa suliranin ng buhay, gusto natin tugon ka agad ng Panginoon. Pipigay niya agad ang solution. No, that is not how it works. You know, there are times in our life that God will say, wait. For this people of God, Joshua and his men, God was saying, I want you to come past. I want you to walk. I don't want you to run. Because many, many times, if they will run, they will hurt themselves. Could you imagine if you will run? They are in this wilderness. Noon pa naman, wala pa namang concrete, ano ho, or um, a nice road that you could walk to. Pwede kang madapa. You can hurt yourself. I believe God told them to come past because God don't want you to easily get tired. Now, uh, I, I know that a lot of us already experience running. Uh, some of us are, that is part of their exercise to run. Isn't it? It's it's hard to run. I don't know if you enjoy running. None unless you are Forrest Gump. 
life is like a box of chocolate. <laughs> so for his gump, mahilig tumakbo. But aside from that, it's hard to run. When we exercise, and a lot of us try to exercise on a treadmill, one thing that I have found, uh, siguro ako lang ito, walking is easier than running on a treadmill. Mas padali sa akin yun, naglalaran. I could face myself, I could breathe easily, not only that, but I don't strain my knee. So, mas madali sa akin yung walking bang may facing ako. So, at least my heart could pump. <laughs> Hindi yung mahihirapan siya. But once you start running, naku, kinakailangan meron kang better endurance dyan. If not, you will have a hard time running. You could even hurt yourself. Diba? Kaya po, ang sabi ng Panginoon, I want you to compass. I want you to walk. Huwag mong madaliin. I want you to wait. And then, not only that, anong sabi ng Panginoon? I want you to go around. Na, mahalaga rin po ito. When we learn to obey God, not only God is telling us, I want you to walk, so we can exercise our patience as we build our faith in God. But also, the Bible said, I want you to go around. I want you to go around the sea. And then, specifically, the Bible said, once in six days. And then, seven times on the seventh day. So, all in all, ang sabi ng Panginoon, you have to do that 13 times in the span of seven days. Now, my question is this, what if, what if Joshua decided to cut it short? You know, instead of them to do it 13 times in 7 days, he will go like, why don't we just do it in 3 days? What's the difference? You know, we will just keep our face more faster so that in three days we will finish going around the city of Jericho to conquer them in three days. Now, the question is this. Do you think that they will destroy the wall of Jericho? Hmm, that's a good question. So I don't think that God will allow them to do a short as they obey God. Kasi ang gusto ng Panginoon sa atin, matutunan natin, sumunod sa Panginoon in obedience. Complete obedience. It's the same way when Jonah obeyed God, isn't it? When God told Jonah to go to Nineveh. I want you to know that Jonah followed God in obedience. He bought a ticket ride on a boat but went to the wrong place. It's not a complete obedience. So we will find that half obedience is disobedience. In this particular case, when Joshua and his men decided not to follow God in full obedience, I don't think that they will be able to conquer the place of Jericho. 
I don't believe that they will see the full power and the miracle of God that they could do in their lives. Mga kapatid, the same thing with our life as children of God. Gusto ng Panginoon is for us to recognize, to be triumphant on our faith in God. God wants us to recognize that He is the captain. He is the driver. He is the king of our life. But secondly, that we will be able to live a life of obedience to God. That continuing faith, that faith or that compliance of faith, which is obedience to God. But also thirdly, number three, the continuance of our faith. In chapter 6, verses 13 to verse number 15, this is the time where they waited so that God could bring patience and teach them patience. One person said, waiting time for God is not a wasted time. And I believe on that. Gusto ng Panginoon na tayo po ay matutong maghintay sa tugo ng Panginoon. In Psalms chapter 27 verse number 14 it says, Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and He shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Maghintay tayo in, in Proverbs chapter 20 and verse number 22. It says, Say not thou, I will recompense evil, but wait on the Lord, and He shall save thee. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 18 it says, And therefore will the Lord wait that he may be gracious unto you. And therefore will he be exalted that he may have mercy upon you. For the Lord is a God of judgment. Blessed are all they that wait for Him. Mga kapatid, the continuance of our faith is to learn to wait upon the Lord. Yan po ang ginawa ng Diyos sa buhay ni Joshua at itong mga kalalakihan kasama niya. God wants to wait. I want you to wait for seven days and I want you to follow me specifically in obedience completely so that you will be able to destroy the place of Jericho. But number four and last, the confession of our faith the confession of our faith how can we be triumphant how can we triumph how can we get the victory when we put our faith in God number four is the confession of our faith in chapter 6 of Joshua, verse number 16, it says, And it came to pass on the seventh day when the priest blew the trumpets, Joshua said to the people, Shout, for the Lord hath given you this city. This was the shout of victory. This 
this is the time wherein they were able to see what God could do. The miracle of God. In Joshua chapter 6 and verse number 2. And I will close with this. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thine hand Jericho. Alam po ninyo? When God instructed Joshua to go and coin Jericho, God already promised Joshua that you already won because God will be doing it for them. Napaganda ng pangako ng Diyos. In fact, God is encouraging them to trust Him. To give their life to God so that they will be able to destroy the wall of Jericho and to conquer the city of Jericho. Mga kapatid, tonight, the only way that we will be able to win in our Christian life is when we learn to trust our life in the hands of God. Anong pinagdadaan mo sa gabi nito? Why don't you make God the captain of your life? Why not tonight that you will comply your faith before God by obeying Him? Why don't you continue your faith before God by waiting This lesson will encourage you to focus our eyes before God. Kaibigan, marahil you haven't accepted the Lord Jesus Christ in your life. I will pray and I will invite you tonight to accept the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is the prayer. Follow me if you want to receive the Lord Jesus Christ tonight. Heavenly Father, I recognize I have sinned against thee. Forgive me of all my sins. Come into my heart as my Lord and personal Savior. Save me tonight. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you follow in that prayer, tonight is your salvation. My prayer is for you to continue walking in faith in Christ. This is Pastor Jesse Ligaya saying, May God bless you.